Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. The coexistence between humans and animals was an important topic on many episodes of Wild Kingdom, including the one you'll see tonight. Many organizations and cultures throughout the world remain committed to identifying ways to preserve and enhance their natural environment. The Amazon rainforest is a terrific example of that collaboration in action. Native cultures who used to poach animals, slash and burn the forest, now benefit from its beauty. The revenue generated through tourism has created sustainable jobs for many people who call the rainforest home. Their future is very bright in the wild kingdom. So sit back and relax and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom right here on RFD TV. The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Whoa, boy. Whoa. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Looks like WK is going on a roundup. Our Wild Kingdom mascot couldn't have chosen a better lasso. It's called a Rihanna, and it's used by the cowboys or vaqueros on the world's largest cattle ranch during their roundup. That's the Dadanala Ranch located in Guyana on the northeast shoulder of South America. It was here that I had an unforgettable adventure. And it was also here that I met Stan Brock, ranch manager. Stan is one of the leading experts on the wildlife of Guyana, and also on this most unusual type of lariat. The unusual thing about the riata is that it's made from long strips of rawhide braided tightly together. It's the most important possession of every vaquero and became especially important to Marlin and me during our roundup deep in the wild Guyana interior. The ranch is located on a vast grassland surrounded by jungle. Through it all runs the Rupununi River. It's a remote, isolated region, much of it unexplored. Hi, WK. We're going to take part in a roundup on the Rupununi, and the only way to get there is by air. We have flown over 300 miles into the interior. What a huge ranch this is. 3,000 square miles of rugged terrain. It's hard to imagine such immensity, even while you're flying over it. Stan is a skillful bush pilot. Out here, you must master many trades. It's remote, relentless country scrub grass savanna land stretching for mile after lonely mile. A wild, wide open wilderness. Passing below us now, dense forests. This is jaguar country, as Stan well knows. He's lost too many cattle to the big cats. There's the Rupununi River, and we should be nearing ranch headquarters. Stan notices that the roundup's beginning. Small herds like this are being formed all over the ranch. They'll come together for the main drive. We'll be joining the roundup before long. There's the ranch headquarters below. Before landing, we circle low to make sure there are no cattle on the airstrip. From this base, Stan supervises the entire operation. He's got a big job with a lot of ground to cover. 
No wonder he needs a plane to get around. Our plan is to immediately catch up with the roundup. On the ground, there's really only one way to travel. With no roads in this remote area, you go by horseback. Your horse becomes pretty important when you roam far in this wilderness. It's your only way back. Stan rides barefoot, as do all Dadanawa vaqueros. The savanna looks empty, but it's home for many strange and interesting animals. One that is most frequently seen is the tamandua. This tree dweller lives mainly on termites, carefully collecting the larva on its sticky tongue. It's an amazingly powerful animal, ripping open concrete hard termite nests with its needle sharp claws. A macaw watches us closely. A little farther on, we see another tamandua, a female carrying her young on her back. Stan's completing a study on maternal instincts in the wild. These will be ideal subjects if he can catch them. I never ride the savannas without my capture bag. Tied around my waist, I have both hands free for climbing. This youngster is nearing the end of his eight-month ride on mother's back. He's big and heavy. It could make the capture more difficult. My best bet will be to grab for the tail. That way I can avoid those sharp claws. They can easily tear open an arm or leg. Now, if baby hangs on, I have them both. The youngster's holding tight, and his weight seems to be keeping her down. The trick here is to keep those claws away from my legs. strength in her front legs is really surprising. Nearly got her. There she goes, and baby's coming right along with her. We know very little about Tamandua behavior. Observing these two should provide valuable information. Now let's catch up with that roundup. Here's Fon Yue, one of our Amerindian cowboys. He'll take the Tamanduas back to the ranch. Amerindians have lived in this wild country for generations. They know it well. They farm too, carrying fresh produce to the ranch on their oxen. A real family affair. It's an occasion and they dress for it in their Sunday best. But today they bring disturbing news, signs of El Tigre, not far from here. Jaguars bad any time, but at Roundup it's a real threat. We've got to move quickly. First we must warm the hands to keep the cattle close and under control. A single cat can stampede the whole herd. Driving these cattle is difficult enough. A jaguar only makes the job tougher and more dangerous. There's an unwelcome sight. Vultures can mean only one thing. Something is dead or dying.
It doesn't take long for us to find the cause of the vulture's activity. There it is, a cow, a stray from the herd. She picked a bad time to wander off. It's a fresh kill. It can't be more than one or two hours old. Here's the telltale sign. The fang punctures go right through the skull. Only one cat kills like that, the jaguar. Rounding up cattle along the Rupununi is a strenuous, demanding job. With a cattle marauding jaguar threatening the herd, the problems have increased tremendously. The jaguar is a double threat. Its presence can make controlling the herd difficult, even dangerous. And there's always the chance that it may strike again. We're nearing our rendezvous point with the other herds. Here's trouble. Two runaways. Just what we were afraid of. The black one is back with us, but the white-faced one has other ideas. It's no use. When a cow's this determined, there's only one choice. Use the lasso. He's got her. Stan is deadly accurate with that riata. While Stan ties the runaway cow, his horse keeps the riata taut. This is a special knot called a lejour. We can release the cow from a distance simply by pulling on the riata. A real display of roping and of man and horse working as a practice team. My job will be to slip the knots from a safe distance, releasing the cow as the herd is driven by. It's an old principle. If Mohammed won't come to the mountain, we'll bring the mountain to Mohammed. The herd's getting closer and I'm ready. Now it's time to loosen the knots. She's back where she belongs. I just hope she doesn't get any more notions about leaving because the area ahead is the main collecting point. We are now approaching the main herd just this side of the Rupununi River. The big job is to keep them all together and moving, to get them across the river. Our cattle are an odd mixture of Longhorn, Brahmin and Hereford. It's an unusual breed, but a hardy one, well suited to this harsh, rugged country. Here's the Rupununi. We'll move them through a shallow stretch. This water can rise suddenly during the rainy season, sometimes as much as 12 feet in a single night. But it's at a low point now, ideal for our crossing. If the jaguar is still following us, he may not cross the Rupununi.
things may be a little more peaceful on this side. Stan is satisfied that the herd is calm and his vaqueros have it well under control. So we decide to search the riverbank for signs of jaguar crossings. Everything seems quiet except for a taper swimming lazily up ahead. They're scarce in this area, probably why the jaguar has begun attacking cattle. Her mate on the far bank seems to be feeding peacefully. No signs of jaguars here. Maybe I can get a closer look. They pay no attention to us, and Stan says it's time we rejoin the herd. What's that? Stampede! Only one thing I can do. I've got to turn the leaders. They're under control. But the question now is, what made them stampede in the first place? The answer isn't long in coming. Our point rider saw a flash of orange in the bush just before the cattle bolted. There's no doubt about it now. The Jaguar has crossed the Rukanuni. The cattle are back under control and the main job of every cowboy on the roundup is to keep them from bolting again. There's no doubt about what caused the stampede. The Jaguar was sighted nearby and nothing else could have panicked them like that. We've searched the area and Stan has found fresh tracks. The cat passed this way just minutes ago. We've got a fix on its direction. Stan decides to follow. Neither Stan nor I are carrying weapons, but he's determined to end the Jaguar's marauding if he can find him. The tracks lead farther out into the empty savanna. We follow. The cat can't be far ahead of us now. There he is. Jaguara, the Indians call him. He who kills with one spring. Stan's going to capture this killer if he can. There's only one way to do it. Lasso him. He's headed right for the rock. It'll be pretty tough to take him in there. He's well protected. Every time I throw, he ducks behind the rocks. And he'll charge if I get too close. He's moving. I've got a clear shot at him. That's got him. Now to bring him out in the open. The whole idea is to keep that riata taut 
and my horse moving. I'm going to need some help. The Jaguar is even more dangerous now. His escape is cut off. And when he finally realizes he can't get away, he may attack. We've got to get another rope on him. Marlin's got to do it. The cat's going for it. Good throw. If we can keep the cat between us and both lines taut, he won't be able to jump either one of us. But he's a long way from being caught. What a fighter. He just won't give up. Those tremendous neck muscles of his protect him from injury. It looks like he's beginning to tire. And here's help arriving. Stan still has the most dangerous job ahead of him. The toughest part will be tying those deadly paws. I can't afford any wrong moves. Back paw first. Now for the other one. Now we can stretch him out and go to work on the deadly front feet. Jaguar needs is a little slack in the riatas. Marlin and the vaquero must keep them taut. This requires extreme caution. One quick blow from that paw can kill a man. That's got one. Now for the other. We've got him. This fellow will be released a long way from here where natural game is more plentiful and where there are no cattle. The dreaded El Tigre caught with a simple rawhide riata. More than I bargained for when I came to round up on the Rupununi. Stan released the Jaguar in a spot far up the Rupununi where taper, peccary, and other natural game of the big cats abound. There have been no reports since of any cattle killed in the area. If there had been sufficient local game where the herd was grazing, the Jaguar would never have become a cattle killer. His natural instincts would have led him to the smaller wild animals first. With the proper balance of nature restored, El Tigre can now live once more according to the laws of the wild kingdom. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, helping people find Medicare solutions for over 50 years. To learn more about plan options or how to protect your kingdom, contact us today. Mutual of Omaha, protect your kingdom.